right, hello everyone. My name is John Gerald, and I am the program coordinator for regional history and genealogy at Pikes Peak Library District. And of course, we are here today to celebrate the opening of the exhibit, The Names Change, But the Issues Stay the Same, which is being put on, <laughs> which is being put on by the Pikes Peak Library District. Uh, it's at two locations. The show is here at 21C, it's also at East, and the show will be up through March. So uh, the show will be up to the end of March, taken down that last weekend. Now I know that we know who AC is and we're gonna see a video about him, so I won't take too long to explain to you who he is, uh, but AC uh, worked for the Taos News, the Colorado Sun, and briefly for the Denver Post, uh, and then was featured a featured political cartoonist for the Gazette for more than 20 years, from 1986 to 2007. Um, he retired from the Gazette in March of that year. After his retirement, AC's art and commentary lived on in syndication for six more years, reaching audiences worldwide through hundreds of newspapers. And then in 2013, AC announced his retirement in June. So interestingly, in 2013 is the year that I arrived in Colorado Springs. So I wanted to give some, some perspective on um, how I've been able to interpret AC as a researcher of local history, right? So I didn't know AC when the comic or when his cartoons were coming out. And I'll say that, uh, yeah, I've run into uh, his cartoons on a number of topics, uh, which is no surprise. And a lot of times the comics make me angry when I see them. Um, a lot of times they're really funny and I, and I have to laugh. Um, and uh, a lot of times I, I see a point of view and I said I hadn't thought of it that way before. I'm glad to have uh, had the opportunity to see that point of view. But I can tell you this, if you're doing research in Colorado Springs history in the 80s and the 90s, you're gonna run into a Chuck AC comic that parallels the research that you're doing. Um, and so something else that uh, I wanted to bring up before I pass this along is in, in the video that we're gonna watch, um, AC refers to himself as a troublemaker for some people. He uh, refers to others as a troublemaker from his perspective, right? But in the end, what he's talking about is wrestling with ideas, like within the community, right? We're not uh, wrestling with each other. And I think that's important to remember. And now he could have donated these um, cartoons to Ohio State University, right? That was an option. And instead, uh, he donated them to the Pikes Peak Library District, where people will have access to them in the community, where they were most relevant uh, from this point forward for research and for entertainment. Um, so there are 10,000 cartoons in the collection. 10,000 cartoons that are in... <laughs> Yeah, 10,000 of them that have all now been digitized. So that's, it's our largest digital collection in regional history and genealogy at this point. And researchers will have access to the material now and in the future. Um, and um, before I introduce Teona, just want to say that it's, the, these cartoons, they, I think they're the most accessible way for people to look back and see what a political debate was at that time. I think we all have that experience of, if you've studied history in, in any capacity, um, you're shown a political cartoon from the early 1900s in Germany or something like that, right? And it really helps the ideas of that time jump out at you. And so these, this resource is going to be so valuable uh, to researchers from this point forward to be able to feel like they were there and understand what was going on at the time in Colorado Springs. So I'm really proud uh, to be a part of a department that is holding on to these materials. But now I'd like to introduce the um, chief librarian of Pikes Peak Library District, Te Teona Shinitza Krebs. Did I say that? Good evening, everyone. Um, actually, John covered a lot of topics that I was planning to cover in my remarks. So 
thank you very much, John. Um, I am very, um, it's my privilege today to welcome all of you to this amazing event. And now I'm going to give you a little bit of background, how all of this came about. It was about maybe, I don't know, five to six months ago. And I happened to be at our amazing individuals concert, Peggy Shivers. And Mr. John Medved approached me. He introduced himself to me and said, hi, Teona, I am John Medved. Of course, I've heard of him or about him. I said, hello. And he asked me if it was possible for him and his wonderful wife, Becky, to sponsor this event. When he mentioned Chuck AC, I was so glad I did not pretend that I knew that individual or I heard of that individual because actually I did from my father-in-law. When I moved here, I don't know, in 2007, I heard a lot of amazing stories about Chuck AC. So I was so proud to mention to Mr. Madbed and say, yes, of course we can do that. And also I, Maybe Mr. AC does not remember that, but while back, while he was helping us, Pikes Peak Library District to digitize all his collections, that that time I was working as an um, ESL instructor at PPLD, and I met him. I didn't know who that he was, but he was extremely kind, gracious, and he made sure one day when we were working together at, we call it now the hall at PPLD, that, was, that I was safe when I was leaving that building. So you did make a, such an impression on me without even knowing who I was. Thank you very much for your kindness, Mr. Chuck Casey. Of course, to make this event successful, again, like I mentioned, that was John Madved's idea, initiative. He not only sponsored this event with Becky, but also he participated in planning. He came up with a lot of great ideas. And while he was providing his ideas to us, to Pikes Peak Library District, he was gracious. And he always let it leave, he left all of that up to us to make it happen. And of course, also, I want to take this opportunity and thank the Gazette for partnering with us to make sure that this event is, is a success today. Thank you very much, Vince. I also want to extend my gratitude to Council Member Crow Iverson. When I gave her a call and asked her if the city of Colorado Springs will um, will work on declaration and make this day or dedicate this day to Chuck AC that you made it happen. Thank you very much and thank you for being here. And of course, I, w I would like to thank Pikes Peak Library District amazing team in regional history and genealogy. Erin Barnes, she was instrumental not only give us great ideas and tell us when we were wrong at times, but also to make sure that all of the cartoons that you see that you, you, we, we had available at our two facilities. Thank you very much. And of course, I would like to thank our communications office, Denise Abbott and her team. And um, thank you everyone who who volunteered or who were asked to volunteer to make this happen. I greatly appreciate that. And I, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this event and I will also let you view the documentation that John Gerald mentioned. Again, thank you for being here today and thank you very much for everything that you do for our community and particularly for Pikes Peak Library District. Thank you. My role as an editorial cartoonist, uh, I think Pat Oliphant says, is to kick ass and take names. 
Chuck Acey is an editorial political cartoonist that's been here in Colorado Springs, uh, started drawing cartoons in the early 70s, was with the Colorado Springs Sun, and then moved to the Gazette where he worked for the next 20 years. People see me as a, a religious right-wing wacko person, I think. Uh, but I see myself uh, differently. I, I see other people as left-leaning Kame Pinkos, uh, troublemakers. So <laughs> I would be a troublemaker to them and they would be a troublemaker to me, I guess, in my mind. But I think actually uh, we can all get along if we know that we're wrestling with ideas and not people. You know, working with Chuck, every day was fun. Chuck made a disagreement really fun, disagreement agree agreeable. He, uh, you know, I would look forward every day to coming in and arguing with Chuck. We didn't always agree on things, but, you know, <laughs> we would start a discussion and I usually end up on the floor in laughs uh, rather than mad at him. I remember Chuck once said to me, um, he believed we live in a free country and everybody is entitled to his, meaning Chuck's, opinion. In some respects, I'm a professional pest because uh, I, I like seeking truth. And uh, I think truth is either in the eye of the beholder or it's a truth is apart from us and we need to search for it. I remember there were protests sometimes at the Gazette when Chuck was there over his cartoons because cartoons have a way of really, you know, animating people's uh, opinions and, and views. And I remember once the publisher, E. Roy Smith, said, Chuck, you better stay home today. I don't think you should walk through this crowd of protesters who are here outside the newspaper because of your cartoon. A lot of my controversial cartoons uh, don't get published. And the way I view that is I don't own a newspaper and I don't own magazines, so, you know, they can pick whatever ideas they want to put in their publications. And they don't tell me what to think. I think he was never af afraid of stirring the pot. You know, he, he didn't seem to be bothered when people disagreed with him or even voiced hatred for him. Uh, he just, I think he took that as a sign that he was, you know, getting through. Uh, and he had incredibly thick skin. Uh, and just an ability to, to sort of laugh it off. You know, it was, he was very Teflon like that. It, things just bounced off of him because he, I think he had such a bemused outlook on the world. And it's like, oh, that's that's funny to hear. I'm I'm glad you're thinking. I'm glad you're talking. I'm glad you're engaged with my cartoon. I was always listed in the newspapers, and they could call me and they could talk, uh, for the most part, unless they were too angry and then <laughs> hang up on me or something. It was fun to argue with Chuck, and I think you know we've sort of forgotten that how. Um, uh, how to disagree better. Chuck made it possible to really argue out differences uh, without, you know, demonizing people. And he always kept it uh, in the realm of friendship and, and kindness and uh, regard for other people. And I love those calls. I love the calls uh, uh, where people were happy with me. I love the calls where people were not very happy with me, but they would uh, they were open to listening and discussing truths. I think there is kind of a divide between actually knowing and meeting Chuck and just knowing him through his work. You look at his cartoons and you kind of, you kind of think he's a fire-breathing conservative, you know, uh, uh, arguer and he's always angry about the issues of the day and he has strong, you know, very firm uh, opinions. And then you meet the guy and he's like talking to your, you know, your funny uncle. He's a, he's a gentle kind of kind spirit and, uh, you know, very avuncular, very sort of, uh, you know, a listener and kind of 
what do you think? I'd like to hear what you say. And so it's the it's almost the, the opposite of his cartoons where he wants to hear your opinions and then he'll express his in the cartoons. I joined the staff here in Regional History and Genealogy in 2016 in the exact same moment that we were uh, bringing Chuck's collection into our department. And I remember reviewing the work um, before I had met Chuck. Um, I, you know, my colleagues were just kind of going through the material and we were all sort of ooing and aahing over this collection that had just come. And I remember feeling really, really challenged by his cartoons. Um, and then I met him a couple weeks later and it's just this huge teddy bear of a person so sweet, so generous, um, and it was such a juxtaposition between his work and his personal, uh, his personality and the way he carries himself. Um, but true to Chuck, I think that that is something he delights in. He 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 loves being generous, but he also loves poking at ideas and ideologies and making people think. You know, I I think it's important they preserve. Chuck's work and legacy, and I love that the library is doing that because um, someday people won't remember what political cartoons were really about. And someday they'll uh, kind of forget the issues that animated this town during the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And, you know, at that time, those are foundational years for Colorado Springs uh, that sort of explain what. Uh, Colorado Springs has become now and why it's such a successful city now. And Chuck was really, you know, in the middle of that. And so I think it's important to preserve those like works of art and, um, you know, make them last forever when he was really in the moment. But what he said and what he articulated about uh, Colorado Springs identity and the issues at the time, I think they will uh, continue to be touch points for the city for years and years and years. When we brought Chuck's collection on, and this is such a unique experience for us as an ar as an archival profession to work with a creator when they're still living. Um, and so it was really amazing to see Chuck come in with his cartoons and on a weekly basis, he was here in our building helping to um, document and describe the ideas behind his cartoons. And so, when you look at the cartoons that are online in our collection, over 10,000, Chuck had a hand in helping us document every single one of those so that for generations to come, we understand the context of what he was trying to say, the why of what Chuck was doing. Um, and so that was a pretty unique experience as an archivist to be able to work with someone over that span of years um, to do that kind of work. So that's an interesting thing to me that I think he spent a lot of time with us prior to the pandemic uh, getting that collection ready for the public to use and enjoy. I'm sure that a lot of the directors of the library wouldn't agree with my views, but they strongly believe in the First Amendment, and they strongly believe that people should have access to information. It's important that the library preserve Chuck Acey's work uh, because of its importance in supporting free speech. and. We don't just collect material that is neutral or nice or happy. Sometimes we collect material because it reflects the identity or the folks in this community. And so I think it's important that we preserve all sides of every kind of ideology, whether it's political, whether it's faith, whether it's just personal. Um, and so I think it's important and, and also really exciting that Chuck's work landed with the library because we are so committed to protecting free speech and community access. He just crystallized so much about this community, about the views in this community, that I think he really represented um, Colorado Springs and what it was like and its ideology uh, more than anybody for many, many years. And people still respond to that and think he probably summed up that personality and that outlook better than anybody, and they remember it because of the cartoons. Uh, you can forget writing, you can forget uh, some of the daily journalism, but those cartoons, you know, they're like works of art and they last, they, they, they're kind of forever. I think Chuck will remain an icon for this town in years to come. When the local library took my stuff in and uh, I worked with Nina 
uh, for about six years to to catalog these cartoons so that they could be easy to find and be accessible to the public. Uh, that was huge for me. Uh, and then uh, just the whole mix of people who work in the library uh, are, are really fun to work with. And I feel like my my work is, is preserved uh, in a place that otherwise they would just be lost. So I'm, I'm so thankful for that. All right, everyone, can we get another hand for that video while I pull out this? Uh... All right, we just saw him speak in the video, but now we're going to invite Vince Bizdek, the executive editor for the Colorado Springs Gazette, up to give some words. All right. Thanks. Does this work, guys? Yeah. Thanks much. I, you probably are sick of hearing me after that video, uh, so I won't talk too long. Uh, I got to say, I'm a little intimidated by this library um, coming down, coming up from downtown. Uh, it feels like a spaceship or something. <laughs> and Bibliotheque Galactica. I don't know. This is huge. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Very glad you're here. Very glad there's a lot of fans of Chuck like I am. Um, Chuck was the face and voice of political cartooning at the Gazette for 20 years. Um, he was the region, the whole region's only daily editorial cartoonist for a long, long time. He drew an estimated 7,000 cartoons just for the Gazette. Uh, it's quite a legacy. Um, my favorite statement uh, of, from Chuck, he said this to Linda Navarro, one of our longtime reporters at the Gazette, he said, it's about planting seeds. You want seeds to grow and then you harvest. You are making people think. I think that sums it up completely right there. I have to say, I do have a favorite cartoon of Chuck. Um, when I was an intern at the Colorado Sun, Chuck was um, the political cartoonist there, more years than I care to uh, uh, remember. And uh, I came from Colorado College, which I, I guess has a reputation of being a little more liberal than Chuck. Um, and uh, you know, I was semi-aware of that reputation. And then I was working at the paper that summer, and we had just declared ourselves at Colorado College a nuclear free zone. We were not going to allow nuclear weapons on our campus. Uh, and uh, made perfect sense to me at the time. A lot of colleges were doing this. So Chuck, Chuck wanted to confirm that with me, and so he came over and said, I understand uh, you've declared a nuclear free zone. I said, yes, very much, Chuck. He said, well, I just wanted you to know I might draw a little cartoon about that. Uh, uh, and then the next day, in the paper, the entire city of Colorado Springs is destroyed by a nuclear catastrophe, except <laughs> Colorado College little grass spot in the middle of this destruction with two kids playing, playing frisbee. One of them happened to be a little blonde kid, so I don't know. But I still have that cartoon. I still have that cartoon. And Chuck signed it for me. Uh, so that sums up our relationship right there. You know, um, he had quite a track record of drawing newspaper cartoons when he approached the Gazette in 1986. It wasn't love at first sight. Chuck wasn't really conservative enough for the Gazette at that point. It was, a, it was a libertarian paper, and Chuck was conservative. There's a little bit of a difference there. But somehow they worked it out, and um, by April 1986, Chuck had joined the staff. Um, <clears throat> after two decades at the Gazette, where he retired in 2007, he went on to spend half a dozen years as a syndicated cartoonist before retiring again. You know, he got his... Uh, start in the eighth grade uh, at an Alamosa civics classroom in the 1950s. Uh, he drew a cartoon in that class, I remember, and the, the teacher was so much impressed, she called the Pueblo chieftain and they did a story on Chuck uh, while he was in eighth grade and a political cartoonist was born. Um, 
Wayne Logason um, was the editorial page editor of the Gazette, still is. He came, I think, Chuck, right after you retired. Is that right? Um, but I think Wayne wrote um, an essay uh, on your retirement. And I wanted to just read some of that because I think it really captures uh, Chuck's contributions to the Gazette. He had this to say. Upon discovering Chuck's work, I couldn't believe these cartoons were published. <laughs> they were bold, honest, and fearless. Too many run-of-the-mill cartoons of the day seemed like they'd gone through a politically correct board of standards and practices that removed all spice. Some of history's most confrontational cartoons had changed the world. Great journalists have come and gone from the Gazette. Few have gained more fame, acclaim, and notoriety than Chuck. I received more compliments and complaints about Chuck than anyone else who appeared in Gazette opinion pages. And that's really true. You loved Chuck or you hated him. <laughs> Those of us who worked with him, we all loved him because he made us laugh. He made sure we never took ourselves too seriously. Um, in that column, at the end of the column, Wayne said this, Chuck, thank you for the courage to defend your values in an entertaining and thought-provoking manner. You have made us laugh, made us cry, made us mad, and made us think. You have defended the defenseless, comforted the afflicted, and afflicted the comfortable. <laughs> As great journalists should. In doing so, you have left an indelible mark on the fourth estate. So thank you, Chuck. That's great to know. All right, can we get a hand for Vince Bizdak? Uh, next, we are going to invite Lynette Crow Iverson up to uh, read the Chuck AC Day proclamation. <laughs> so our proclamation, is this one? Can you hear me? The proclamation today, March 6, 2024, whereas Chuck Assay is an award-winning, world-renowned political cartoonist. Whereas Assay worked for two newspapers in Colorado Springs, the Colorado Springs Sun in 1978, and then moved to the Gazette after it purchased the Sun in 1986. Whereas Assay drew political cartoonists daily for the Gazette for more than 22 years until he decided to retire from the paper in 20. 2007, following a career that spanned more than four decades of drawing editorial cartoonists for the newspapers. Whereas Assay worked at what Assay's work was enjoyed throughout syndications in hundreds of newspapers across the country and around the world until his official retirement in 2013. Whereas in 1987, Assay won the H. L. Mencken Award, which is a literary honor given to journalists who have made a significant contribution in the field of journalism. Henry Lewis Minkin was an American journalist, essayist, satirist, and cultural critic. In partnership with the Gazette, Pikes Peak Library District celebrate Chuck Assay's work and legacy by digitally archiving more than 10,000 political cartoonists he created for the Gazette in its regional history and genealogical department special collections. The library will also host an exhibit of selected cartoons in the galleries at the three largest libraries in the district, Library 21C, East Library, and Penrose Library. Now, therefore, be it resolved that City Council of Colorado Springs proclaim Wednesday, March 6, at Chuck Assay Day to recognize the considerable impact on the contribution to the Colorado Springs community and the world that Assay made through his political cartoonists and their narrative. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just a warning to everyone, Penrose is closed right now, so if you show up, they're not gonna let you in. All right, let's hear now from the man himself. Uh, will you come up to the stage, Chuck AC, and give us some words? Thanks, John. Wow. Oh. Uh, uh, excuse me, I, I nodded off on the uh, day uh, <laughs> reading. 
Uh, if there's anybody in this room that I haven't offended, I really apologize. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just wanted to savor uh, this moment a bit because I think we're celebrating something, but I don't know what. Uh, this isn't a retirement party. I'm already retired, and it's not a command performance because you all showed up as if, you know, command performances are done in the military where you better show up if you want to advance. And uh, this really wasn't a debate about anything where one person wins and another person loses. Uh, I just want to thank uh, especially uh, Laura Liberal and her husband who are in this very room right now. Ann and Terry, would you stand up? Uh, wow. You don't realize how hard this is. <laughs> Ann and I dated in high school back in Alamosa. And uh, she's a good writer. She, she won an award. She went to the New York, uh, to the UN. She wrote an essay on world peace. So that tells you what kind of person Ann is. Uh, she, I think liberals tend to uh, want to make a difference, and that's why so many go into media and <laughs> stuff that they don't pay very well in the media or anything, but uh, I think a lot of people really want to make a difference, and that's why they pick those kind of jobs, and they do a good job. But sometimes they roll off the rails a bit. And so do conservatives, I have to admit. My sister, Claire May, uh, one time I was grousing about the liberals, what, what they're doing. And, and she says, well, Chuck, she says, both sides do it. And that kind of, Ann said that to me one time, too. She said, both sides do it. And that's really true. You know, we both think the end justifies the means, and so we lie, we cheat, we steal. And uh, I think the liberals are a lot better at that than conservatives. <laughs> but I just wanted to savor this a little bit to, to kind of look at what is going on in this room today. And a lot of people aren't here who I wanted to recognize but they are still recognized even though they're not here. And so I just wanted to go around and, and tell you how I think it got organized. And uh, Fred Krebs, Krebs is probably, I've known him for 40 years. And Fred is the most, he is the happiest Christian man I've ever seen. I mean, he, he opens his mouth and, and something funny comes out. It's always real, and he's a kind of a wild man. He rides a motorcycle, he used to. And uh, Fred uh, married well. He, uh, <laughs> he married this tall, beautiful woman who was practical and tolerant. And I know she was tolerant because she married Fred. <laughs> and uh, they had some kids. And one of them went over to Eastern Europe and visited uh, the country, not the state, the country of Georgia. And he met this beautiful, very tough woman. And uh, he married her. And I know Tayona is tough because she grew up in a rough neighborhood. Uh, Georgia is right next door to Russia, so you got to know that she's pretty tough. But she loves freedom. And she loves our First Amendment, and she worked her way up to be the head of the public library in Colorado Springs. And all of this kind of relates because Tayona called me out of the blue while well, she sent me an email. I was kind of resting in the workhorse uh, retirement barn. I, I was just waiting for the glue people to come. <laughs> Some of you younger people might not know who the glue people are, but, but they make glue out of horse hooves. Anyway, 
I was just ready to retire and everything, and comes this email, and she says, John and Becky Medved want to have a display at the library and have a reception and recognize you. And I didn't know John and Becky Medved, but I heard that name many times because they're bigwigs in the business community. And so I said, well, sure, I didn't, I didn't realize uh, what this meant, but it, it was a real surprise to me. And uh, so they told Tayona to go ahead with it, and Tayona told Aaron Barnes that she was gonna handle the thing, and, and uh, Mickey was her assistant, I guess, and I, they started putting this thing together and uh, organized it, and then they got Drew to bring his magic cameras in, and they, <laughs> it, it just goes on and on and on. The, the director wrote the invitations, and John sent his invitations out to their friends, and Marge and I sent our invitations out to our friends and difficult relatives, and so we're kind of all here, and you know, this isn't a liberal gathering, this isn't a conservative gathering, there are rich people here, and poor people, and people who color, and um, people who use words, and we're all here together celebrating something, so what are we celebrating? And that was the question I wanted to kind of tell you about, because I think it was organized even earlier than Fred Cribbs. I think it was organized way, way, way before, and there's a, a verse in the scripture that I've pondered for my whole life, it's Ephesians 2.10, that you can do good works that God has prepared for you in advance for you to do. And I think everybody in this room probably figures into that because there are a lot of good works that you don't even know about until you look back. If you wanna know what's gonna happen in the future, you need to look back. And I think that's where we find real celebrations going on. <laughs> because uh, I think this is, might be just kind of a idea love fest. We will all get together and we eat and we drink and we have a good time together and we celebrate ideas. And I'd like to just clo close a bit with uh, what General Douglas MacArthur said about old soldiers, only I've adapted it. To old cartoonists, never die. They just go to the library and hang out with all the other homeless people. <laughs> so I know I'm gonna die, and I know, but, but, but I'm so happy that uh, my ideas will live on, and Aaron Barnes and uh, Nikki will uh, be guarding them with their lives, very lives. They have AK-47s in there, and they know how to, no, I'm just kidding about that. I don't think they are armed. But anyway, yeah, I just, you swing, I want to stay a little bit free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you want to? Yes, please. Okay. I'm Becky Medvedev, for those who don't know me, and John. <laughs> And I am so sorry John's not here. He's home with COVID. This idea came about years ago. He, of course, admires Chuck greatly, and he really wanted to make sure, and, I, and it's clear from this room that this community also loves Chuck, but he wanted to make sure that, you know, every, he said, Chuck is known across the country. He's one of our most famous people, and we need to celebrate him. So that's why we're here, to celebrate Everything you said, the ideas, the ideas of being able to share different views but still love each other. So that's all. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Zane. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I want to just close by singing a little song. Uh, it's my swan song. <laughs> uh, 
I've alluded to a lot of birds in the workshop. I've talked about sitting ducks and about uh, vultures and eagles and doves. <laughs> and so I wanted to just celebrate by singing my swan song. And uh, this is my swan song. Oh, uh, no, I, uh, I got to admit. <laughs> I've never heard a swan sing, have you? <laughs> I mean, I don't think swans sing, they just honk. And, but I think there is something kind of related to swans that I feel uh, re closely related to. And it's that little children's story about the ugly duckling. <laughs> and the ugly duckling was teased and laughed at and everything. And then it turns out the ugly duckling was a swan. And so now I'm uh, wanting to sing my swan song. My son can join me if he wants. <laughs> oh, the Lord's been good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> everyone for coming out. We do have free copies of Soda Springs over there for you to grab. Um, th this is the, uh, he mentioned it in the class he was giving earlier, and this is a book illustrated by Chuck Acey, so please grab your copy before uh, you head out. And of course, we'd like to thank everyone uh, who helped make this possible. Thank you, Medved. Th thank you, Biztek, for speaking. Thank you, Ace. AC, sorry, it was the... <laughs> And thank you, Pro Iverson, as well. Um, and one other person, Nina, thank you. Nina scanned 10,000 of these things so that people can now into the future will be able to do this. So I wanted to make sure that I know about that. Thank you, thank you, Aaron. I look forward to all the phone calls my department is going to be getting over the next month. And no, I really do, uh, I really do look forward uh, to the conversations we're going to have. And, and I'm proud that we're going to be holding on to this history for this community moving forward. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Thank you.